Anomaly detection is an incredibly useful technique in the world of machine learning. We can use supervised or unsupervised learning to accomplish it depending on the type of data we might have. If we don't have exact labels for things or we don't quite know what we're looking for, anomaly detection can help us determine if something has gone wrong with our system. A common use of anomaly detection techniques is in fraud detection. Let's say a credit card company keeps track of its customer's purchase history. It knows what kinds of things people buy on what days, and it creates a model of each person's spending habits. To make this easier to visualize, let's pretend that all of these features can be compressed into just two dimensions. That allows us to imagine the features as a two-dimensional plot with points, each representing a purchase by the customer. Let's say that a new purchase happens. To our eyes, this doesn't look quite right. We can intuitively see that this sample doesn't quite belong with the group. However, if a computer were to compare this with the group in any one dimension, the sample would be acceptable. It's less in the x direction than the rightmost normal sample, and it's certainly less in the y direction than the highest purchase. So what can we do to flag this as an anomaly? One technique involves creating a boundary around the cluster of samples in multiple dimensions rather than using simple thresholds in one dimension at a time. Here, we can see that our new sample is outside of this acceptable range, and we can flag it as an anomaly. In the case of our credit card company, we might ask the customer if they really made this purchase or if the anomaly was bad enough, maybe cancel the card and ship out a new one automatically. This is a broad overview of what anomaly detection does. There are many different techniques and algorithms that can be used to detect anomalies. When it comes to embedded systems, predicting faults and mechanical failures before they happen is extremely useful for things like factories, large equipment, and space-faring vehicles. Back in 2005, researchers set up bearings to rotate for days and wore them out to the point of breaking. They recorded the vibration data, which you can see in these charts. At some point, about 30 days out, all of the bearings broke. This data has been made freely available on NASA's site, and there have been lots of research and competitions using this data. The idea is to try and predict anomalies in the vibration data long before the bearings break. Imagine applying this to things like large motors, bearings, or compressors in places like factories or maybe on a satellite. If you could detect when something was about to break, you might have the chance to repair it before it causes thousands or millions of dollars of damage. This is why anomaly detection is so interesting in the world of embedded machine learning. Connect your phone to your Edge Impulse project by heading to smartphone.edgeimpulse.com. In your project, head to Live Classification. Start classifying, and when your phone says it's collecting data, start moving the phone in a known pattern, like left to right. Then move it in a pattern that does not match something we've done before. I'll move mine forward and backward. When it's done, you'll see that the model classified the left to right motions successfully, but it attempted to classify the forward and backward motions as idle. That makes sense because the X and Z axes weren't moving, which were the only axes that made any difference for the other motions. However, if you look at the spectral features plot, you can see that our forward and backward samples seem to create their own cluster outside of other samples. Note that these are the X, Y, and Z RMS values. Just like our credit card example, we can clearly see that something is not right, but our classifier isn't trained to pick up this motion, so it classifies it as one of the four possible categories. Head to Impulse Design. We can see that there's enough information present in the spectral features to separate anomalies so we can keep the spectral analysis block. What we need is some form of anomaly detection, so let's add that as a second learning block. Note that Edge Impulse is using k-means clustering, which is an unsupervised learning technique that attempts to find the boundaries of each set of feature clusters. Save the impulse and head to the newly added anomaly detection page. Cluster count gives us the number of clusters that the k-means algorithm will look for in the data. You should have at least as many clusters as you do classes, but in practice, you want more to account for variations in the data. For example, if one of your motions has the phone in different positions, like pointing down instead of up, 
you will likely have a few clusters in that one class. Feel free to play around with this number and take a look at where the clusters form in the output plot. Once we train the anomaly detection model, any new sample will be given an anomaly score, which determines how close it is to one of those clusters. Anything over zero is considered outside the cluster boundary, and we can set the threshold here, which is 0.3 by default. You can select any number of axes to perform the k-means clustering algorithm on, but as you saw earlier, the RMA values of each axis gives us the best separation. So check each of the X, Y, and Z axes for RMS and click Start Training. When it's done, the clusters should be assigned. Head to Live Classification. Repeat the same test as before, moving the phone left to right, and then some other motion, like forward and backward. When it's done, take a look at the output. There's a new anomaly column, which tells you how much each sample is outside the norm for that class. Negative numbers are well within the normal limits for the class, but anything over 0.3 is flagged as an anomaly. Sure enough, if you look at the spectral features plot, you can see where we started in the left-right cluster and then moved out to our own cluster. Click on one of the anomaly predictions, and it should highlight the sample, showing you that it's far outside of one of the clusters. Feel free to try this again for any of the other motions, but I'd like to show you this in action on a microcontroller. Open your Arduino motion project in Edge Impulse and head to Impulse Design. Add a k-means anomaly detection block and click Save Impulse. Head to the newly created anomaly detection page and select all three RMS axes. Click Start Training and wait a few moments for the clustering algorithm to complete. When it's done, head to the deployment page and download the Arduino library. You might need to delete the old library from your Arduino Libraries folder so that it does not conflict with your earlier one. Even if you are able to install both, it makes it easier to keep track of which one you're using in Arduino if you only have one. Start the Arduino IDE and include the newly downloaded .zip library. Go to File, Examples, and open the accelerometer sketch. We won't use the continuous one this time to keep things simple. Select the serial port and begin uploading this to your board. This sketch should actually be the same as before. The only difference now is that EI classifier has anomaly should be set to 1, and we should see an anomaly score printed to the console. In your own application, you can now use this result.anomaly value to determine if a particular motion is outside of what your model expects to see. Remember that in Edge Impulse, we looked for this number to be over 0.3 to determine if something should be classified as an anomaly. When uploading is done, select your port again and open a serial monitor. You should see the program sample for two seconds, perform inference, and then let you know what the results are. Notice that we also have an anomaly score now. Try performing one of the trained motions, and you should see that it classifies the motions and gives you a negative anomaly score, letting you know that it's quite sure the motion falls within the expected norm. Now, try a motion that you didn't train for, like forward and backward. It should attempt to classify the motion, but it should also give you a high anomaly score. Try some other motions that you did not train the model on, or try performing one of the motions erratically to see what happens. When it comes to classifying motion, an anomaly detection system can be great for determining if something seems off or letting you know that something might not have been classified correctly.